Split graphs or piecewise functions are basically graphs that are composed out of a couple of functions put together. So let's just try and put an example. The performance or the production in a factory is never linear, is never one of those beautiful functions that grows and has never changed. Okay, sometimes your production is flat, sometimes your production is going down, sometimes your production is increasing, depending on a number of parameters. And that is an example of, or this is what we're going to refer to when piecewise function. Up until now, in core mathematics, you've taught or you have studied functions that are really, really very simple. Either a parabola, which has a very sort of predictable behavior, or a hyperbola, or a, an exponential function, or a straight line function, whatever the case might be, the functions that you're using are functions that actually have a very predictable behavior, if you want to put it that way. Piecewise functions are not like that. Piecewise functions are defined according to certain intervals. So here are some examples of piecewise functions. So we're going to start first by looking at how do we evaluate split functions. So a split functions that are defined by at least two equations, each of which applies to a different part of the domain. So in this case, we're going to apply restrictions to the domain. Here is an example of a piece, uh, a piecewise function or a split function. Okay, it's got two parts to it. It's got the equations part, and also had my domain restrictions. What does that mean here? It means that if the value of x that I'm going to substitute in this function is bigger than zero, then I will substitute it on this top part of the equation. If, however, the value that I'm going to be substituting is negative or less or equal than zero, then I will substitute it in the bottom equation of the two. So the equation tells me where it is it that I'm going to substitute. And we have studied a piecewise function already, only that is a very simple one, and that is your absolute value function. If you remember correctly, the absolute value, value function had a similar look to this function over here. So how do we evaluate split functions? First of all, to evaluate a, first, a, a, a split function, you first of all look at the domain to see which one of the two equations that you're going to use. Then you're going to substitute or plug in the adequate value into the right equation, and that will give you the outside value. So let's say here we need to substitute or we need to find, we need to evaluate this split function g of x equals to x when x is less than 1 or equal to 1, or 3x minus 1 when x is bigger than 1, if we need to find the g of minus 2, because minus 2 falls in this part of the domain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute minus 2 in this part of x. Okay? So in this case, oh, my apologies, let's go back. So in this case, g of minus 2 is going to be equal to negative 2. However, g of 2 it will have to be substituted on this side of the equation because 2 is bigger than 1, and therefore I will have to substitute it on this side. So g of 2 is going to be equal to 3 times 2 minus 1. g of 2 is equal to 5. Okay, here is another example. We're going to have this example number 2 now. We have a function g of x, which has the form of x squared plus 2x plus 1 for any value of x that is less or equal than minus 2. And it has the function 1 minus x squared if x is bigger than negative 2. Okay? So, if we want to determine what is the value of g of minus 5, g of minus 5, because minus 5 is less than negative 2, then g of minus 5 will be substituted in the upper part of my equation. So I substitute it in here, and g of minus 5 is equal to 16. If, however, I want to find g of minus 2, or sorry, if I want to find g of minus 2, because g of minus 2 minus 2 is also equal to negative 2, it still falls on the top part of my equation. So I will substitute it in here, and that is equal to 1. If, however, I want to find g of 1, what I'm going to do then, because 1 is bigger than minus 2, it falls on the bottom side of my domain, I will then substitute 1 into the bottom side of my equation, and that will give me g of 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 squared, and that is equal to 0. Okay, and that is basically evaluating a split function. Okay, so one special type of split function here is what we call the step functions, and the step function looks basically like a flight of stairs. 
Okay, here is an example of a step function. As you can see, I don't have anything in terms of x in my equation here. Everything are constant values. So it is 0 if x is between 0 and 1. It is 1 if x is between 1 and 2. And it is 2 if x is between 2 and 3. Okay, so what does the function look like? Here is a graph of the function. As you can see, is between 0 and 1, the function has a value of zero and is a horizontal line. Please note that on this side is open because it's not including one as my solution here. When x is equal to one, my step function has a value of one. The value of one happens for all the values of x that are bigger than or equal to one and strictly less than two. And that's why in here I've got an open circle because it is not part of my function here. It part of the next part so when x is equal to 2 then it starts at 2 and here is my step please note that it looks like a flat of stairs and that's why we call it step functions because it's basically flat all the time domain and range of a split function the domain of a split function is basically the set of all the input numbers okay this will not include the points where the function does not exist. In some cases, the function does not exist. We're going to look at some of these points in a moment. The domain also controls which part of the split function will be used over certain values of x. So in other words, the domain is the one that gives you an indication of what equation you will have to use in order to find your y values. And again, your range, as it is with the definition of function, is the set of all the y values. Okay, so here we have another, the points, what we call points of discontinuity. And I'm going to take you through some examples in the book so that you can see what it means by points of discontinuity. These are the points of the function where there's either jumps or the function has a hole. Okay, for example, here is a case of a jump. Here we have the one function that we looked at before, x when x is less or equal than 1, and 3x minus 1 when x is bigger than 1. Okay, so in this case, my function, when x is equals to less than 1, my function looks like this. So it comes from x from minus infinity all the way to 1, and that is a function y equals x. Now, from 1 onwards, my function then starts at 2, because if you substituted a value 1 over here, you're going to start at 2, and then from there, the function is going to go further up. Okay, so this is a point where the function has a jump. Okay, other points of a function, okay, is a case of the step function that also has point of discontinuity. And these are also points where the function jumps. Look at the case here. So when I got to the one, the one wasn't included here, it was included in the next. So there is a jump here. That's why we call it a jump discontinuity. When we got to two, again it jumped. When you go to 3, then the function doesn't exist. So these holes, as we call it, are the points where the function is discontinuous. Okay. Now, axis of symmetry, vertical line, symmetry, etc. Okay. The vertical line that splits a function in half is your axis of symmetry. And we know that from when we did the absolute value function. Here is an absolute value function. What is the axis of symmetry of this function? Is the axis of symmetry is the line y equals to 1. Oh, sorry, x equals to 1 is your line of symmetry because it's the one that makes the function symmetrical. Okay? Maxima and minima. What is maxima and minima? Maxima is the highest point that the function will ever achieve. The minima is the lowest point that the function will ever achieve. So in this particular case, we have the absolute value function. This absolute value function does not have a point of maxima, but it does have a point of minima. In other words, it has a lowest point, it doesn't have a highest point because I will assume that this function will continue growing on either side. The other function, however, has the lowest point of the graph. So here in this graph over here, I can actually establish what is my minimum. And if I have a maximum in this case, now this function again, please note that from here it continues growing. So I wouldn't say that it has a maximum. I can, however, conclusively decide or say that it has a minimum of the value where x is equal to negative 2 because there is no portion of the function under negative 2. Okay, intervals of decrease and increase. Okay, increase in interval, and remember this will always look at it by using a vertical 
line test and then is swiping my ruler from minus infinity towards positive infinity so from left to right so we will have from left to right because my function is going down we say that this interval from minus infinity to negative 2 excluding negative 2 the function will be decreasing okay then from negative 2 to 1 in this interval here the function is increasing as you can see the function is going up and then from 1 onwards my function is constant it remains as a horizontal line now for some examples from the textbook this is exercise 3.4 page 67 question number one there is a split graph that is given to us there and the split graph is defined as follows so the split graph is has the form of x plus 3 which is this portion of a line here for all the values of x that are less than negative 1 and please remember that is strictly less you can look in your textbook and that's why I've got an open dot here okay and then it says that it has a constant value of 2 for any value that is between minus 1 and 2 including the 2 so please note that the dot is at 2 and then from 2 onwards it has the value minus 1 over 2x so half minus a half x is the value for any value after 2 so there it has this form over here so there is my split graph now there is a set of questions that I need to answer from your textbook the first question here reads find f of negative 2 and show on the graph with the letter a what you will find this answer okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute f of minus 2 again to find f of minus 2 I need to see what part of the domain f of minus 2 belongs to if I look at it that would be for any value of x that is less than 1 because remember less than 1 is where minus 2 will be found so I will have to substitute it in the upper part into x plus 3 and minus 2 plus 3 is equals to 1 so the solution here will be that f minus 2 is substituted into that part and that is equals to 1 so that value of a is going to be equals to or that a is going to be this point over here okay now find f of 1 okay if you look carefully f of 1 does not x uh, f of 1 in this case has a value of 2 because remember that when x is between minus 1 and 2 including 2 the function has a this form of a straight line so f of 1 is going to be equals to 2 f of negative 1 does not exist remember negative 1 is not included in any of the intervals so when x is equal to 1 I don't have a value for the function okay and last find f of 2 f of 2 again has a value of 2 remember you can start at two points but this one is not included that one is included okay f of 4 in this case 4 is on the bottom side so I will substitute it in here and the letter B is the one that is going to indicate where the 4 is what is the zeros of this function what is the zero of the function how do we define the zero of the function is the value of X where the function has a value of 0 in other words where the graph touches the x-axis this function has only one zero and that is at negative 3 okay just okay so we are now answering question so at negative 3 the function has a 0 okay at then when x gets very close to negative 1 so as the x approaches negative 1 what value does the function approach okay the function is close and close to the value of 2 okay what happens when the function f of x when the x gets closer and closer to 2 so as x gets closer to 2 the function also has a value of 2 but if you come in from this side the function has a value of negative 1 and this is something that we're going to discuss more in depth going forward when we talk about limit now for the pre-recorded lesson I will just stop at this example for the live lesson I will probably discuss a few more examples before I go to introduce limits